it is somehow uh, emotional and complex and simple all at the same time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special Prague chat. It is uh, focused on Marillion. It's kind of, um, it's for my sake, because I'm kind of, uh, I don't know a lot about Marillion, so I thought I'd get some experts on here. Um, uh, so I'll introduce you all. Or, uh, yeah, we'll start with Nora. Nora, we go way back. We were Prague fans and summer camp. And uh, yeah, and, and when that goes back to, gosh. Camp, we were playing the mood for a day at our cat talent night. Yeah. Yeah, there was a small contingent of Prague rock fans. We kind of stuck together. Um, Dwight, who's not here, he may join us mid chat. Yeah. He he introduced ELP to me, actually. I didn't know about ELP, and he got me into ELP. Dwight uh, introduced me to Marillion, yeah. And uh, he got you into Marillion? Yeah, I think he's the one who mentioned it to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, Mick. How you doing, Mick? How you doing? How you doing? And Peter. Hi. <laughs> so Mick and Peter, I don't know you guys. You're probably friends with uh, Nora. Uh, yes. I actually don't think I've met Peter, but he was at. Oh, Dwight is in Newfoundland. He cannot make it. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe next one then. Yeah, yeah absolutely sure. absolutely right there's a lot to cover with marillion yeah so where where should we start like i'll just say what i know about marillion um i i remember uh nora was oh you're a Mar i knew you were a marillion fan and you tried to get me into it i had a drummer in a band i was in who was a huge marillion fan he tried to get me into marillion he he, he loaned me a cd which i listened to in the car once but uh nothing ever really stuck you know i never really ended up really exploring the band so all i know is the big hit they had kaylee or and then also i remember how they were pioneers as far as um doing the what do you call the social social money raising for Crowd bands funding. Crowd crowdfunding funding. Yeah, they were, crowdfunding yeah they were yeah they were doing it long before all of these uh internet crowdfunding sources yeah. were no, invented yeah so so basically that's all I know. I remember listening to the album. I don't remember which album it was, but I thought it was really beautiful, but it was more softer. And I think I was more into more harder rock at that point. So that's why I didn't get into Marillion right then. So so where should we start about Marillion? Mike. <laughs> 1983. Um the script for a jester's tear 12 inch was the first time I was introduced to Marillion. Um, 12 inch single with the little gesture and the monocle and, uh, with the mask coming, uh, sorry, the monocle was, um, uh, garden party, but, um, uh, market square heroes, 12 inch with the mask coming off and so forth. Um, that was the first one I bought. I worked at a record store when I was in high school. So I got first pick of all the albums or 12 inches that came into the store and Marillion, just the artwork alone caught my eye. So I had to go and listen to them. And I was hooked after that. Absolutely drawn into the band. So what, what was it about Marillion that hooked you? Uh, one, um, it was a different kind of guitar sound than you were hearing elsewhere at the time. Uh, the keyboards that Mark was playing was a completely different sound. Uh, they had Mick back in those days on on drums, though they went through a few drummers. They landed on Ian eventually around Fugazi, but um, they uh, had a sound that was uniquely UK, unlike um, everybody from from Yes to uh, uh, Aphrodite's Child all the way down the line. They just were doing something that wasn't being done at the time especially with Fish's vocals and the lyric. No one was matching the lyric like Marillion was in the early days. Period. Yeah, I think for me, oh. Dwight just, I'm a huge Yes fan, and I think Dwight and his brother Ian got me into Yes, and then, oh, yeah, there's script for adjusters. Oh, can't quite, keeps blurring it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me fix that. It, it must Go be ahead. obscene or something. <laughs> it's yep. obscene. No, no, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> let me fix that. <laughs> Anyways. But I think 
Dwight just mentioned, oh, you probably will like Merlion because I like yes. So, and I list, I probably got misplaced childhood, I believe, was my first time. I also worked at a record store. So I could just get it and then bring it home and loved it. I love keyboards. I think keyboard prog rock to me is all about big, big sound and keyboards. And I don't know, I just immediately liked it. So that was simple. <laughs> I don't know what was different about it. It wasn't it wasn't too different to what I liked, I guess. And Peter? Well, I uh, encountered Marillion on my own. Uh, I traced it back to 1985 when I was in Montreal. And uh, they have uh, they have a big connection to Montreal. Um, and I've got the the Montreal shirt here. Um, and, uh, I, uh, I got to know them just on my own. Um, I was, um, kind of fed up with, uh, the, the pop of, of the eighties that was everywhere. And, uh, I just heard Kaylee on the radio and, uh, I, uh, investigated further and the, the rest is history. Um, my, my very first CD, uh, that I ever got was, was holidays in Eden. And uh, that really, that one really sticks with me. Um, and uh, what something I've heard about Marillion that that really resonates with me is that um, Marillion, the music of Marillion reaches places that other music doesn't. Um, it, it, it is somehow uh, emotional and complex and simple all at the same time uh it 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 really touches me um it, it uh, i i don't get that feeling from from any other music that i listen to um and uh, especially uh in the last few years in the pandemic um where we were all very isolated listening to uh marillion live listening to their recordings uh, just reminded me um, that uh, togetherness does exist and will exist again, and it was it was of great comfort to me during the pandemic. And I, I have to add in, I really appreciated the couch convention they did. It was brilliant for them to like pull that out as a Marillion weekend they couldn't have. Right? Did you watch the couch convention? No. No, they had a whole Friday, Saturday, Sunday Marillion convention on 2021 because that one had to get canceled. So they did a couch convention and pulled out some of their their better uh, concerts and did a Marillion weekend virtually. Oh. So they did uh, Marbles and uh, Seasons in, and I think they did, uh, they, I can't remember the third one, but they did a whole Marillion weekend in 2021 called the couch convention. So... Is this something they, they do regularly, a convention? Every two years, yes. On an odd year, they do the, the Marillion Convention, a three-day Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. Um, it was the Netherlands, England, and Montreal, but they've expanded to other places now. So That is brilliant. I've never heard of a band doing that. I think that's an awesome idea. And when I took when Nora and I first went there, they they typically on the first night, they will do an entire album in its entirety. And so Nora and I have seen everything from Seasons in its entirety. Happiness is the road in its entirety. Marbles was another one that I saw in its entirety. Brave, Brave, was, the next Brave was another one as well. Yes. But um, they they really pack it in. They have themes around the second night, A to Z. So they went through their discography and and did an uh, you know A to Z set list, and then they had one called, um, well, what was it called? Nor the long ones or the Ew, what was the name yeah. of that one? Remember oh, oh, did. size matters, size matters, where they did all the long songs, right? So <laughs> and even in the, the show, they would say, "Oh, do you want to hear this or do you want to hear this?" And then we'd clap, and then they'd try to pick, but we we really wanted to hear both of them. I can't remember. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then on Sundays, they would have like fans could come up and play with the band. Like I think they signed up or something. So you would yeah, have swap swap the band. 
Swap yeah, they called it Swap the Band. Swap out a guitar yep. player, swap out a drummer. That was so cool to come in the afternoon on like the sun or Saturday or so they would do stuff. Yeah, during the day and yeah, and then we'd all hit, yeah, it was so cool. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're really into their fans. Yeah, their fans really support them with supporting them by like yeah, giving them money to make their albums, like crowdfunding, and then they put their name. They put your name if you were a donor. I think I don't donated to one of them, but I can't even remember which one it was. I have three or four or five maybe that my names are in it because I really funded the band in the, in the days there. And of course, with the economy, you can't really do that all the time. But, you know, uh, I did the best I could to support the band. So, yeah, they're really innovative for sure. And Fish, too, when he went solo, I, you know, the Fish on Fridays thing, that whole thing, I, I joined in that club, too, so. Hmm. Yeah, I think they're both very, Fish is the previous lead singer, and I guess he left in, my, Mike will tell you. <laughs> uh, I think it was 87, 1987. Yeah, so now it's Steve Hogarth, who's been the lead singer longer than Fish has, but people still like some of the fish version sometimes better and and honestly i have to add into this people say that that marillion is fish i i tend to disagree because h has been with the band the longest and yeah. he has made them fish put them on the chart and in the, the popular eye and he put them in a place with prog rock listeners that I don't think H would have been able to do with his early years of doing, you know, the, the whole Europeans, um, some of the other bands he had before he joined Marillion. Um, he wouldn't have been able to pull it off in those days with the music he was performing. I think the four guys shaped H in a direction. And as we listen to Marillion from the nineties on, the lyrical thing has really changed and shifted uh, um, with with H at helm on the lyric. So I, mean, I don't know if it was you or someone else who told me the difference between like Fish as a singer and H as a singer is H can kind of more of a musician where Fish is more of a poet. Poet. That's exactly what I told you. Yeah. Yeah, that was from you. Yeah. And and like like Fish is very poetic when he sings, where H is is um, more melodic. And you can hear the 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 one thing that points out is when he sings "Garden Party" or "Script for a Jester's Tear." There's an obvious difference between the two lead singers, you know, as the way they interpret the song, right? So, right. So Hogarth is singing classic fish songs then. Oh, for on, sure. On yeah. yeah, of course. And this I reminds me. It sounds just like Yes or uh, what other band has changed singers. Um, wow. Well, kind of like Peter, like Genesis, like, like Genesis, yeah, for Peter sure. Gabriel exactly. left and became people don't even know Peter Gabriel was in Genesis sometimes, but yeah, <laughs> they're often compared to Genesis with the lead singer swap because yeah, and and there is a stark contrast between you know Phil and Peter and and Fish and and uh, H and and whatnot. There, there were differences, and whether the band decided to make that shift radically for a reason, I don't know. But Marillion, there were they were at a point where they were almost like, we don't have anything, we can't put anything out because we we don't have a singer. So they tried this one cassette that uh, H sent them, and uh, they were like, let's bring the guy in and give him a shot, and. And that's where they said, yeah, let's let's do an album with this guy. He's got a range and uh, his vocal is going to last for a while, you know, so and it has it has lasted 35 years, I guess, maybe now. And they're both very theatrical. I think the lead singers of Marillion bring that theatrical element to the stage, their live show. Yep. That's a good word, actually. You mentioned theatrical. I do get that impression uh, more than other bands. Like, I don't think of Yes as theatrical. Of course, I thought of Peter Gabriel and Genesis as theatrical. But uh, yeah, I do get that impression that uh, Marillion are more theatrical. Is that Has that been consistent throughout their career then? Yeah, I would say so. Fish was someone who painted his face like, like Peter Gabriel did, and he was very theatrical and playing characters almost and H Steve Hogarth, we call him H 
uh, he changes costume and he has personas on stage and he's he's brings that theatrical he's till to this day. I although yeah, I haven't been following them as much as Mike has lately. Or Peter, perhaps. Peter, what do you think? You I think they're pretty theatrical. The H he's very charismatic. <laughs> I, I I would say it's uh, it's more uh, more honest. Uh, I, theatricality doesn't come to mind uh, yeah. for, for recent Marillion. I, I this weekend in 2019 was my only weekend that I that I saw them live, and um, I what I felt was just a bunch of guys doing what they love. And uh, that's the main thing that I came away with, uh, the love in the room, the, the audience and, and the band. It was, uh, it was such an incredible feeling. Um, the band, uh, they, they mingled with, with the audience afterwards and they seemed to know people in the audience who have been to these weekends yeah. before. <laughs> and it was, it was just an incredible experience to, to, to witness that. that. That's actually how I met Lucy was was mingling with the band afterwards and outside um each of the conventions and um i actually uh had come up with an, a concept for uh, a 40th anniversary box set and presented it to the band and and so forth but uh it got killed because of emi um but uh rothers and uh pete signed saying that's a fantastic idea but didn't go any further and my emails with Lucy kind of died down after that, but they were very interested in my concept for that box set for a 40th anniversary. But Lucy EMI has Lucy's clutches. Lucy's yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Lucy's who is Lucy? Their oh, their manager. Lucy Jordash, yeah. Their their manager oh. uh pretty much since uh H joined the 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 helm there. So and that that shifted things from EMI to Racket Records and so forth. They had a few more to have to record with EMI, which was uh, Seasons End and so forth, was still with EMI. But then when they switched in, I think it was right around uh, Brilliant.com, I believe, is when they started doing the whole conversion into Racket Records and doing their own thing. Which is their own label, yeah. They have yeah, their, their, own own, their own label. label. Oh, okay. Yep. They do some other artists too, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. They they do have oh. a few artists on board now. Oh yeah. And sometimes and, they have their own artists that open for them at these festivals things. Yeah. yeah. John Wesley is one of them that's notable. John Wesley. Yeah. So. So, uh, how many albums have they released? Uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, I think they're going to nineteen or twenty albums now. Okay, <laughs> that's I lost count at sixteen. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, how how did you like the recent one? I remember seeing some reviews, um, on YouTube. Some guys giving reviews the new one. How did you guys like the newest one? I'll be honest, and I haven't listened to anything since "Happiness Is the Road," which was probably twenty fifteen. D20. You've heard Marbles. Marbles is after, after uh, happiness. happiness. Yeah, Happiness came before Marbles, I believe. Am I right? No. Really? No, Marbles is 20, 2004, which I'm looking at. Okay. Happiness the Road is 2008. Okay. I'm off by a couple of years, but either way. But Sorry, it sounds that like can't be made, I guess, 2012. I've heard that. But yeah. Well, Mike, Mike, you're more... I I think I didn't like Fear and the new album I just I listened to everything twice one for the 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 sonic and then the lyrical part and then I listened to both lyrically they're still strong but sonically they've uh, I I don't enjoy the direction they've gone um for the H H years, uh, marbles will always be. I don't think they can ever do better than marbles, in my opinion. So, marbles was just a, an amazing album, frankly. So that was two thousand four. Yeah. Yep. I would. I even bought the the twelve inch heavy vinyl version of 
of uh, marbles that doesn't include Ocean Cloud. <laughs> oh, well, wow. <laughs> 17 minute song. They could have done another album by itself, you know, but, you know, and made it a three disc set. But, oh, they, they chose not to. So they just left it off. But so what's your advice for uh, for albums that maybe your top three albums that you love the most. And obviously uh, people who are new to Marillion are probably going to want to check those out. And, and and if you were going to start listening to Marillion, I would definitely recommend Misplaced Childhood um, as a foundation. Yeah. Um, for the band, forget the lead singer, the band itself, those four guys are Marillion. It doesn't matter who you put in the front. The four guys behind that lead singer will always make Marillion sound like Marillion, period. They can look at one another and tell that they need to do something. Just to watch them on stage and the way they interact with one another is, is short of uh, production amazement. You know, the way they're able to like just a simple nod or looking at the monitor guy and going, you know, whatever, and giving him a nod or... The, the, they just have a knack, the four of those, those four uh, individuals have gelled so well over the years, you cannot mistake the sound. What are your top, what are your other tops? Um, I would say, well, Misplaced Childhood, Marbles, obviously, and if I had to pick a third one, um, I'm actually kind of fond, oddly, of Marillion.com. And the reason I say that is because that that start well, that or strain this strange engine, one of the two. But Marillion.com, they started to sh shift more away from the three minute song to the longer progressive stuff as they got into this strange engine. And um oh shoot, uh after that came well, Anarachnophobia was a uh, was had some long songs. They started getting into the the longer songs right around uh the Marillion.com days. So really? Yeah. Because Marillion.com had all little short songs, right? Yeah, I don't remember Marillion.com. It doesn't stand out. That's when me. they started their campaigning. That's when they actually got to the whole racket records movement and it was arachnophobia that they actually started the the, the crowdfunding thing and okay. that happened all the way up to uh somewhere else which they did on their own um i consider somewhere else being like the third disc for marbles it's all the stuff they didn't put on marbles <laughs> on on some, somewhere else so yeah, I'd say my top are certainly Misplaced Childhood. Season's End is actually my favorite H album. And yeah, Marbles is one of my favorite, and so is Somewhere Else. Yeah. Peter, yeah. what's your top choices that you Yeah, have? Peter. Peter, speak up. <laughs> <laughs> Season's End. Uh, it was the first album with H and uh, just the, uh, the the intro with the King of Sunset Town. I, I have this image of uh, the whole world not knowing what this new singer is going to sound like. And that's the first glimpse we have of him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the vocals on that are just amazing. That whole album, uh, it's absolutely my favorite. Um, I had um, I had the joy and privilege of uh, sharing Marillion with uh, with a friend, a workmate recently, and um, so so your question was which uh, which albums would you would you start with? Uh, well, I started just with individual songs, and I started with Montreal, live in Montreal. Which just year? To, uh, 2013, I believe. Okay. That's the one they did season's end the first yeah. day. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this this gave uh my friend just a, uh you know a, a glimpse into uh into what the 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 the, the band is about, the how the, the communication with the audience and just the the whole emotional package uh, of everything. Um and um then there was um 3 minute boy uh from holidays in Zeeland. Uh, which is just fantastic. Um, 
uh, the, the the audience participation in that singing along it's it's it it it, it really touches me and uh it, it really uh grabbed him as well uh first album i uh i i told him to listen to was misplaced childhood of course once we got to the full album stage <laughs> of his training <laughs> <laughs> Well, that'll be the, uh, that's the one I'm going to, I was actually going to get it done this week. I didn't. So I'm going to do it probably Sunday. I'll do my react to childhood's end. The whole album, you know, that'll be fun. Misplaced child. Misplaced, or, childhood. misplaced childhood. Oh, what did I yeah, say? Childhood. What did I, oh, which is, a, which is actually the end song on it is childhood's end is the last okay. song on the album. But Oh, that must be the name of a book. I'm confusing it with a book. There was a sci-fi book, I think called childhood's end. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, what what other uh, what other like is it for all of you? Is Marillion your number one band, or what? Or, or how would you rate it as far as your favorite bands? Yes. Um, okay, we won one yes from Peter. <laughs> um, they they are definitely in the top three. Um, mm -hmm. Their their latest stuff kind of detoured me away, but um, they are definitely in my top three go to for sure. And who are the other two then? <laughs> Rush, well, or yes, yes, uh, Rush. Rush, Rush is it? And lately, I've really mm -hmm. been involved with and working with and contacted the management for a Mexican band called The Warning. Oh, they're great. I know The Warning. Yeah, and The Warning by far is is, in my opinion, the next Rush if they move that direction and choose to go more progressive than they are. But the warning is an amazing band by all means. They're three sisters, whatever, but um, Marillion's always been, what am I going to listen to tonight? Throw on some Marillion. Usually it's clutching at straws because it's just one of those albums that fish struggled with to finish. And um and Fugazi was another one they struggled to finish with Fish because <laughs> they spent a lot of time drunk in, la in lifeboats, <laughs> Mark and Fish. <laughs> that's a, that's another story. <laughs> I'd say top two, yes, being my top number one and Marillion was always number second. It kind of bumped ELP out of the way down the road. Wow. ELP is good, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, well, it, it helps that the Marillion is still around. I mean, ELP was only around for a decade or so, right? Spock's Beard, that would be my third top. Oh, is, is that right? Yeah. I just, um, I've reacted to four or five, four or five of their songs. I'm, um, I just, re I just did a react to um, Animal, what are they called? Um, <laughs> animal something, uh, something animals. Uh Anyways, there's a bunch of guys from Spock's Beard in this new band, and they just have an album coming out next month. Wow. And yeah, you can, I don't know. I don't know why I can't remember that. My my memory is just not what it used to be. But I haven't been following. Yeah, I've kind of been dropping off following anything new lately. I mean, I work in music, so I guess I get enough of it at work or something. Maybe I come home and I watch. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. When, you, when you're producing music and, and whatnot, it's, yeah, you have to limit your input. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Quiet. It's sort of like that with me and the channel, too. Uh, you yeah. know, sometimes to relax, I want to watch a movie. Sometimes I don't even want to listen to music, so. Yeah, that, that happens. Uh, yeah, in a lot of cases, like you, you dial all the way back because sometimes you want to break that pattern. You listen to bands from the 70s, like, well, ELP's one. Uh, you've got things like Gentle Giant and, and King Crimson, those bands that were all kind of, and, and especially Jethro Tull still releasing stuff as well. So they just put out one earlier this year that's fantastic. They're still in form. And produce and actually making records that sound a lot like Jethro Tull, you know, like there you are, would imagine they would they would be right. It's so. it's a, it's really amazing uh, how prog has lasted and it's continuing to last. Like there's new prog releases coming out all the time, and um, also old bands. Like I know Eloy just came out with a new one, and they they started in the late '60s. Um, what was another band? Um, Hawkwind, Hawkwind just oh, released yeah. something new, and they've been around since the early seventies. Like it's, and then of course you know every Marillion's 
Uh, I guess they started in the 80s, you said? Yes, 80, 80. Right. They, actually, they formed in 79 and did the marquee for a long time. They paid their dues. And then 83, 82 is when they got signed on. And then 83, they released script. So, All right. And they were kind of heralded as the the sort of the new neo progressive band, like uh, rock, prog rock kind of seemed like it had its end. You know, yes, broke up. The seventies ended, and, and then music was just going in a totally different direction. And then uh, I remember Marillion as one of the very first around. I mean, there's other bands too, like uh, uh, Stephen Wilson and stuff, Porcupine Tree, and then uh, uh, mm-hmm. Opeth, Opeth, and um, um what other bands well of course there's dream theater that started up but i remember hearing a little of their stuff in the 90s and it was too too heavy too too metalish for me i wasn't really now that's another thing about uh marillion they've never really veered into the metal sound at all they're definitely rock right yeah 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 Yeah. absolutely yeah Yeah. they're they've never really gone any further than just smooth Smooth prog rock is what I like to refer to it as. Yeah. Smooth prog rock. <laughs> yeah. And I think that appeals to a lot of people. And uh it's nice that there are still they're still uh carving out that kind of a niche. Um, it, it it's like it's like like Pete was saying that you know they touch you in a way with the music. H doesn't even have to sing. It's just the, the 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 melody and the way those four guys put it together that you feel you feel something with the music, you know? Mm-hmm. You really mm-hmm. feel something with the music that you don't with any other band. I don't know what it is. It's just like fantastic place off of marbles. You just go someplace or ocean cloud. You hear it and you just go um clutching at straws, some of the songs off of that album. You just go to the number one at the end of the bar like like fish said you just kind of get into it because of the four guys behind the lead singer mm-hmm. so yeah it touches me but mo- yeah most music i listen to yes does that to me wonder stories but yeah a lot of yes wonder <laughs> stories absolutely yes among others but yeah that's a great song that's how i know i like a band it, it, it touches you yeah like peter says it just touches you i, I can't explain it mm-hmm. and uh since you're of course nora here you're representing the female species of the species <laughs> yeah, a lot of prog bands are mostly guys you know uh, i know there's always exceptions is is marillion more um do they have more female fans or is it just, just like all the rest of them? They might. They even have, a, there's, a, I think, a Facebook group I joined, female Marillion fans. Well, I haven't been on it in a long time. I can't remember what it's called. But I would say I'd see a few more females in the audience compared to a other progressive rock. Like, certainly King Crimson would be highly male. Uh, yes, exactly. highly male. Rush, highly male. Marillion a lot more females yeah and the same with genesis when when yeah. when phil started singing it pulled in a lot more of the 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 girlfriends of the people who watched them right so that yeah. audience expanded to a, a diverse crowd as well so yeah, yeah maybe yeah. it is more girlfriends she would there seem to be coupled with somebody anyway yeah. i mean i yeah. don't know I, yeah yeah no and i went to this i brought the dwight and he had a friend uh yeah, we all went together. We drove from Ottawa. We went together. I tried to get her to come on, but she was shy. So I won't. She was, I'm shy because she's a huge Merlion fan, and she's gone to see them in Portugal and and uh, Zeeland. Whereas, yeah, that's maybe that's anyway. Yeah, she's gone to see them all over the world. So she's a huge fan. But yeah, still more maybe more accessible. I don't know why. Sometimes I think. It's because of H. I think he's very charis- charismatic. I think females yeah. love his charisma. That's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. He's a draw. Well, we're down to the last minute, so uh, that, that feels like it was a perfect length. I think, was there anything we didn't touch that uh, that was worth mentioning about the band Marillion in the last there's, minute? There, there, there's plenty, but that's another 40 minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> well we'll we'll do this again you know um dwight uh we'll get make sure dwight can include us or be included next time 
Yeah. Yeah, just, he's one that got me interested, and in, he's a big prog rock fan in general. I mean, I haven't yeah seen him in a long time, but yeah, and he's he's definitely one of those. Uh, oh, what's the word? I mean, he got you into it. Um, there's always a certain people who are really good at getting other people into music. That's something to appreciate. They spread the good word about certain bands and whatnot. Uh, so thanks, everybody. I guess that's it. We're going to wrap up. Like Once again, everybody, make sure you tune in for our next reaction. Uh, I'm going to do a full album react to uh, Misplaced Childhood. Did I get it right? Yes. That's coming up this week. And also the, us and, and Dwight, we're going to do some more of this kind of broadcast. So stay tuned for that in the future. So signing off from everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank Don't you. You love them. Yeah.